Am I supposed to hit the... Uh... Oh, welcome. We're here for the Marek Madness. We've got the B team going here today. We got me and Eric in here. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do our best to uh, guide you through the Marek Madness. We got a bracket going on. We have uh, 16 players, um, a lot of the Wrecking Crew members, a lot of uh, Wreck Poker Premium members who won their way in through the orderly heads up matches that John Somsky runs as part of our. Uh, Poker Stars home game. And uh we're gonna we've got four matches set up for tonight. What do you think, Eric? Excited. Round two. So these these players have survived a heads up match and now have earned the right to come in and uh, battle again in round two. Nice. Yeah, I think uh both you and I were in round one, weren't we, Eric? Uh yeah. But, and uh, we have the dubious, <laughs> dubious honor of hosting round two because we didn't make it through round one. <laughs> hey, we're not we're not the only uh, quality player that that failed to make it through the that's true through the first round. <laughs> yeah, lots of fun though. This all this whole uh, heads up thing has just been a. Uh, a really cool thing that we've been doing. I think this is what the third year now. This is I looked this, at Eric? it. This is actually the third year that it's been a sixteen game, uh, sixteen person oh, okay. match. Yeah. So the inaugural one uh, was was eight, I believe eight eight, eight players. Yeah. 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 And so you know whoever won that you know it doesn't doesn't really count. I don't I don't think so. Yeah, because it was, uh, <laughs> wasn't a very good field. It was yeah. just a bunch of wrecking crew guys. I, mean, I don't think people took it seriously when there's only eight. <laughs> but now that there's 16, people are taking it, taking it seriously. So. Oh, that's true. That's very true. So um, as we go through the matches, one of the things that we like to do is we like to do a few giveaways. And one of them is, well, there's a couple ways. You go on, uh, when you're on Twitch, you select the hand that you think is going to win. Doesn't matter about the suits, just whatever hand you think is going to win. Uh, you can put that in the Twitch chat. And then I'm going to ask Eric to pick a card from the 52 card deck. And if that specific card shows up, we'll have another uh, drawing. Exciting. So what card do you want to pick, Eric? I'm going with... What's your favorite card? Let's go with the nine of diamonds. Nine of diamonds. All right. So if the nine of diamonds is in the winning hand of any of these matches, uh, we will be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see now that uh, that we do have displayed the matches that were coming up. Uh, we have four matches for you. First is uh, our own monkey systems against Joe Cool. Second match is K Poker Wannabe against B Jammin. And then third, we on the docket is Pet Vet against our own Taylor Moss. And then Poker Geek MN, also known as John Somsky or the nicest guy in all of poker, against <laughs> Joey Ingram. So I think we're about a couple minutes away, Rob. Yep. From the matches like we're starting. Two minutes away from the matches, a little less than two minutes. So um I'm looking forward to it. Joe and Keith. And now Joe has been surprisingly is he admits that he hasn't been playing poker that long, but he's surprisingly been doing very well in our home games. So um, Joe definitely, um, has a very good, um, uh, opportunity to beat Keith Brandt, our own monkey system. And he, monkey system, I mean, he's just like, he just takes this game very seriously, studies a lot. Yes. Um, very tough player. 
So I believe this is going to be a pretty tough match. I think we're going to see some fireworks. I actually did a little little uh, research, and actually Keith, coming into this year, so between twenty two and twenty three, he had the best record in terms of match wins. He was seven and one. Oh, in the heads years. up, yeah, in the heads up in, in, the, in the brackets because he was wow, uh, he was a uh, runner up one year and then won the whole thing in twenty twenty three. Nice. So he's our so, returning champ. Yes. So he has very strong, strong record here. All right. Match is underway. Um, let's see how these guys approach this. Yeah. So oh, is that a limped pot? Must have been. So they both got a piece of this board. And when your head's up, you know, it's hard hard to get grab a piece. I think they're both feel confident that, you know, they may be ahead, uh, but, you know, they don't want to put a lot of money in the pot. But, of course, Keith has other ideas. <laughs> yeah, like you say, if uh, getting a pair in a heads up is, well, getting a pair, period, in Hold'em um, is not as easy as people think seem to think it is. So, especially heads up. There's only two hands oh, in play. He, he gets um, he gets Joe to hold the best hand. Yep. Ooh, wouldn't diamonds be a nice nice flop in this one? <laughs> Let's see. So he's uh, he's opening to two. He's opening uh, min opening. Obviously, a suited connector is worth opening. Let's see what Keith does. This might be a up oh, a three bet opportunity uh, with a suited ace. And let's see what Joe does. No, that's too much, too much for Joe. Whoa, Keith is starting out uh, getting some hands here. All right. So men open and a call, and again Joe got a little piece of this, so we could see some fireworks here. Yeah, I'm not sure how aggressive. Uh... Joe might be. I think. I think middle pair. You have showdown value. Uh, I, th I, th I think it's going to call. I mean, oh, but I'm wrong. He, oh, yeah, he's uh, he's getting pressure. a little aggressive here. Yeah, trying to put pressure on with his one pair. Um, is. He's oh. gonna string him long. No, <laughs> oh, he, he put it right back in his in his face, oh. right back in his face. Yeah. That's a fact. That's that's the danger of that that raise, right? You 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 have equity because you pick the flop. You have back doors, so uh, by calling, you can can see that turn card and and realize your equity. Yeah, yeah. He didn't give himself to get two pair or perhaps. <laughs> Or that flush draw that he had. <laughs> oh boy! Um, so anytime like... you have a face card, I would I would open. I wouldn't limp. I don't think. How about you, Eric? Um, not the stack depth. I think as you get I get shallower. Um, uh, limping is a is a viable strategy. You know, around the twenty to maybe thirty big blind range. But at this yep, stack depth, yep. I'm, I prefer. <clears throat> for open of course we can see that he was quite dominant he, he probably would have faced a three bit but right but i do prefer yeah uh, uh on the button i do prefer uh, yes just bumping it up and one thing that people don't do enough i think <laughs> and especially uh in heads up when you are um, the big blind we don't see a lot of three betting. And I think there's more opportunities to three bet, especially in a heads up situation than there is um, in a, in a full ring game. Well, yeah, by three betting your, uh, you can attack uh, a weaker opening range because heads up right. you're, you're, you're going to play more, more hands and you're going to be, Opening more hands with a raise.
this is uh this is indicative of 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 uh, heads up play when you have two marginal hands like this that are competing against uh you know each other in in on this type of board right it's kind of interesting if you look at the dynamics here i think uh he's got a gut shot and a plush draw and Joe has the <laughs> bottom pair <laughs> Okay, so it looks like Keith is choosing his limping range based on the cards that he has. Right. Um, yeah, the, the danger of that is that if your opponent picks up on that, mm -hmm. then that they can start uh, attacking your limps uh, with a w wide range of hands. Yeah, I think uh, in... With those types of cards, I just, if I'm not willing to raise preflop, especially at this stack depth, I just probably just fold it free. Yeah, I think, I think it really, for me, it depends on how I feel my, my opponents is, is feel, you know, what I, I'm guessing his strategy is, is he trying to see a lot of hands? Is he trying to play tighter, looser? So kind of how sen how sensitive they are to, to open sizes. Hard to get so, away from that ace high. Uh, top pair, top kicker. Now a middle, middle card pairing might give Joe some pause because because Keith I think does this have would be, check all right. I think this might be a good spot for uh, Keith to go ahead and um, take a stab. Well, I think uh, just gonna get his value bet called here. Yeah, there's no way Keith can fold an ace here. Oh, he, he decides to put it in. <laughs> Ooh. Wow, and Keith is really short. Yes, definitely. That's an it interesting play. A... Interesting play. I mean, is he... Was that a bluff, or was that was he trying to value bet there? With that raise. I think he was trying to get a jack to fold. Hmm. Unfortunately, the jack that he <laughs> had was the ace jack. <laughs> the thing is, when you have an ace, you beat the jack. Yep, that's true. So what was he trying to get to fold? Well, that was a quick match. That Joel quick uh, match. made quick work of that. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to talk to Keith to find out uh, what his uh, thought process was when he made that bet. What he what was he targeting there? Was he trying to fold out a seven? No, seven is never seven. Seven is never folding. Seven is never folding. A oh. jack might, but again, you're you're ahead of a jack. Yep. Yeah, that was. So, up on our docket. Right. We have uh, Ben, East Coast bidder in the home game, and Ron, who is the K-Poker wannabe in the home game. Yes. They are both, if you ever play the home game, they are both uh, often at the final table. Yes. So. Uh, and, and they're both from Canada, as it turns out. Ben lives on the East Coast. Okay. Um, he does some Twitch streaming on uh, Fridays and Saturdays. He likes to, uh, he does a pretty good, you know, a lot of tournament play on Fridays that he, uh, Twitch, he uses on the Twitch stream. And then on Saturday, he generally plays in the international series, home games. Yes. And he does there. a lot of, yes. and he does a lot of, of, uh, 
put streaming there too. So uh, B Jammin ninety six is his is his handle on the Twitch stream. So if you get an opportunity on Friday or Saturday, check out his Twitch stream. It's uh, very entertaining. Um, ben is a dedicated player. Does a lot of studying. He's part of the wrecking crew. Ron, on the other hand, has been very active in the home games and does a very good job. He's uh, won a lot of matches, including the one against me in the first round of the heads up. (laughs) And we're starting. Who do you have? Who do you pick for this one? Oh, oh, that's this is tough because, you know, like like I said, they're both pro. They're both uh, you know veterans of the home game, and I'm sure they've they've matched up many times. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how uh, their uh, familiarity with each other translates to the to the actual match. Uh, but and, I'm, and, and because I'm they've like, been in the winning mm-hmm. circle enough, mm-hmm. uh, they probably have a pretty good heads up game because they've had a lot of practice at it. In the in the home games, looks like they're both playing the board here. Nope, the seven plays, doesn't it? Yep, the seven plays. So here Ben's uh, at this stack depth. He's going a little over the minimum on his open. So he's going two and a quarter on his open sizes there. Which I like. And uh, everybody's got a piece of this. Yeah, he's got a big piece of this. He's got a very strong draw, which just came in. Yeah, and, and that uh, gave uh, Ron the uh, third, third pair. pair. But again, heads up, third pair. You might think it's good enough to call, but it's tough with a four liner, right? Four line of the straight. A lot yeah. of things. A lot of things can beat you. And so Ron's going with the limping strategy. He flops quite well with his. Uh, Flush draw plus king high, he can represent the king. So he comes out betting. Um, small enough bet that Ben decides with his backdoor flush draw. And you can add backdoor straight draws, is worth a, uh, a call. And Ron decides to size up a little bit, goes half pot. Takes it down. That was a good play by Ron there. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That shows you the power of position. You know, even in a heads up match, <clears throat> the position means so much. Yeah. Definitely. So. Definitely, it's so far. I think we're seeing more small bets, little jabs, a little one big blind, two big blind bets. Um, a little, a little different pace than uh, our previous match. Yeah, we had two very aggressive opponents in the last matchup. Obviously, um, the way it ended up, and here we're like you say, we're seeing a lot of uh, smaller. Smaller betting, just uh, feeling each other out. Uh, Ron, one thing about Ron, he's very deliberate. He um, he doesn't make hasty decisions. He usually uh, thinks about each of his decisions before he uh, makes it. So... Well, this is a game of decisions, right? This uh, yes. can make better the best decisions more often, and uh, that's when you'll come ahead.
With second pair, is he thinking of raising here? <clears throat> oh, yes, he is with second pair. That should get a fold out of Ron. So. Yeah, that's interesting. I think that's a dynamic that has come to play because of their uh, familiarity with maybe, each other. Maybe, maybe because it's interesting, right? It's he got the fold, but he was he had the better hand, so mm -hmm. uh, um, right? It kind of kind of leaves me with a question again: Are, are is that a value bet, or are you bluffing? It could be one of those. Um, betting for protection or for right. denial of equity. True. All right, yeah. Most turn cars are going to be above that eight, so. Yep, yep. Top pair? Uh, oh, top. Oh, two pair. So, yeah, two pair. Ben here. Um, we got some backdoor possibilities for Ron. Eight, nine, nine, king, ace, king. No, oh, he's not gonna. He's not gonna try to realize that potential yeah. equity there. So. Not sure have we seen Ron uh raise pre flop yet. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure queen, that we have King Queen and on the button he, he just limped just completed, so um I would have thought this would be a hand that he would want to. Oh looks and Ben got another straight, so he's uh hitting cards here. Yep. He goes with a big bet. I mean, with a four liner, I mean, what's he trying to get? He's trying to get somebody here. Ten, with? Hmm. maybe a ten. Trying to get a ten to call. Trying to get value, and and you know, it ranges are so well defined in a uh, full ring game. It's very easy to define ranges, but then. Ranges in a heads up match are very, um, very wide. Hmm. So a lot of times you're kind of, you're guessing, you know, what, what could this guy have? He could have just any two cards. Um, so, so what full ring games are you, you playing, uh, where they're so well defined, Rob? <laughs> oh, when I play, when I, well, <laughs> let's, let's just say they're more defined. Yeah. Then a heads up match. Oh, okay. <laughs> I play a lot of uh cash on ACR and there it's it's kind of amazing once I get my poker tracker stats up and above uh -huh. um going how consistent a lot of those players are, even at the micro stakes. So what's Ron what's Ron gonna do here? Been yeah. discipline yeah. with the fold. This yeah. one of the fold. Again, that bet kind of stands out. Like I said, they've been just kind of that small bet, and Ron decided to go with the big bet there. So, yep. I think I think that was a good discipline fold there. Yeah. So when I played on ignition, uh, I don't see as many well-defined ranges. Oh no, no, I know. So. <laughs> That's a totally different animal. <laughs> but no, I it's it's amazing because I played, you know, what, 10,000 hands at micro stakes. Uh -huh. And it got to the point where I jump on a table and I would have, you know, three or 400 hands on four of the players there and they're, all their stats look like mine. So it's like, well. <laughs> That's a bad game. This, 
This is a bad game. <laughs> That's a bad game. See? <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> so it became another less... reason why you don't see me in the ACR streets. <laughs> <laughs> So that's where I'm where I'm saying that a lot of times oh, okay. you get some pretty defined ranges. It's it's a lot easier to play against than something like a heads up match like this. Interesting that uh now Ron does come with a bigger bet. Not I d I don't see Ben going away with a pair and, no, and he uh-huh. has the flush flush draw. Yep. I think um Ron might have been doing a what a Ooh, wow. He's trying to represent the ace or the wow. king, and he got the fold. Yeah, so I think that, that was a, yeah adjustment maybe. Ron knowing his maybe his image of hey I've I've been making these small bets small bets and here I bring out the big bet. Uh, It'll look like he has something. I, yeah, so it, yep. the small bet, small bet, small bet helped him get uh, holds right. with his bluffs. Right. So kind of because, playing that, uh, that it looks so value game. heavy. Right. Yep. Yep. And bottom pair here for Ben. Not much happening for Ron. No. Again, we haven't seen uh haven't seen any three betting pre flop going on here. Um no, this is more I'm not sure we've seen that many premium hands, but we also seen um uh, more of a, a limping strategy. So it's yep. hard to no way two bets. Uh you're not gonna get a three bet. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. And I wonder how that uh strategy plays out in the long run. Uh this this limping strategy. So there we go again. Uh Jack Deuce, I probably raise that. If I'm going to play it, I probably raise it, and and we see the limp going on, which allows Ben to see a flop with just any two cards that he happens to have. Right. So I think there's two reasons why you want to raise pre, and that's to um, help define the range of your opponent. It's so interesting that uh, we saw a flat with queens. Yeah. So again, uh, kind of wanting to see a flop and playing post flop. Ooh! Then once he's behind, he decided to go with the one big blind bet. Uh, of course. Oh, oh, Ben comes out with the big bet. Here I think it is a value bet also like you say deny equity yep. without a heart right he doesn't want to see another heart in the river right <clears throat> get your value here uh well he still has hope for the uh flush if he has such a thing and he did have the queen of hearts so yep um it was a decision Ooh, a couple of aces and even and though Ben has a better kicker, he's behind because yep, he got out flopped. He got out flopped because there's a pair of fours with an ace four two pair. <clears throat> Let's see what Ron does though. Let's see if Ron goes for the raise here on the turn. I think, I think it just calls. Extra value. I think it just calls. Yep. Yeah, you're right. No. Uh... No, he's got a, just about a pot behind, so 
a little over a pot behind. Oh, and he just checks. I'm surprised. Um, there was that four liner. Um, maybe that's a little conservative. Yeah, I think. I think you bet there. I mean, I think so. I think there's uh, especially uh, Ben had raised pre flop, so he has a lot of mm -hmm. aces, ace ten, ace, ace jack, like he had ace. Ace Queen, Ace yep. King, a lot of aces that I would call. Um I feel like that's a maybe a bet fold spot you could bet and if if uh, Ben raises then you then maybe you think about folding. Yeah. There's a spot I would probably three bet that's you know yes. King Queen clubs. Uh, calls and then uh leads out again. And Ben Decides to raise it. Interesting that uh, this time get a call. Ooh. And uh, oh, look at this big bet now. He's trying to represent the flush. Oh, well, flush. And or ben some has kind the flush. Of... <laughs> oh, he does have the flush. He gets raised, and there's no. <laughs> yeah, there's. No way he's calling this. That. Yeah. So, uh, see, thinking about three bet bluffing. Oh, well, flopping trips is always a nice mm -hmm. feeling. Might be able to get a little value. Um, ben does have some backdoor stuff. Hmm. I see a raise here from Ron. Clicks it back. <clears throat> that was Try a, to get a nine high flush draw on the paired board. Good enough to call. No, I don't. Ben's I don't think so. Ben no. <laughs> Wise lays it down. Yep. I don't think we've seen a lot of bluffing from Ben other than what he's been doing pre flop and on the flop. But when we get to the turn in the river, we don't see a lot of. Um, no, it's been more honest. I. Uh... Yep. I think his read is that Ron's more honest on turn and river, but as we saw, you know, he does have it in his arsenal to to float and, and bluff. Yep. And they both got a bunch of nothing on this board. <laughs> we'll see if uh Anybody does that little stabbing? Okay. Ben does decide to stab at it. Although with the best with the better hand. <clears throat> yep. And out of position. Uh, but it was check check on the flop, so mm -hmm. and that Yeah, I guess you can consider that a bluff, although he did have the better hand. The uh turn pairing. Is also an interesting dynamic when the current pairs the board. Um, as the in position player, he would have, or as the out of position player, he would have uh, checked more often. Right. So because the in position player with top pair would have gone ahead and see bet there. Probably, so, yeah. So, so that might be one of Ben's thought processes. That it, it favored his his range at that point. Yep. Oh, well, here's an interesting one. Oh wow. Okay. So he, he did go for the king. Uh yeah. Mm. And decided to go with the uh check raise with his flush draw. <laughs> no queens again for Ron. See what he does this time. And Ben's got an ace again. Let's see if he three bets there. He'd be the first one today, I think. There it is. There it is. 
that uh, click back through that. Yep. Which it's interesting in Ben's shoes because he's getting such good odds to to call, but against an opponent that you never saw, <laughs> you, you know, hardly ever three bets. It can be a little bit. And maybe scary. Like you say that the size of the three bet may have uh, give him the ability to call it. Whereas right. if he had a bet, say, you know, 3x, the mm -hmm. original open, um, we might have seen a fold preflop from Ben. So favorable turn car for Ben, but, you know, three diamonds. So he still thinks it's good enough to get a little value. And what does he, what do we got here? Well, he's got her. Of gutters. He's got a one gutter. Just one gutter. Yep. Needs the eight. Plus, with clubs, if eight of diamonds comes off, he's not feeling great either. Yep. Yep. So, Ben's sticking with the two and a quarter uh, open size when he's on the button. Yeah, and he's, he's he's sitting there with <clears throat> sixty big blinds, but his opponent is sitting there at thirty six. So really, the effective stack is thirty six. Right. Oh, we see flopping trips again for Iran. Does he go for a raise here? Nope. Oh, very good. That's interesting. Oh boy, they both have a uh, club draw. I mean, we can see Ron. He's pretty well ahead with his trips, but, you know, club. Nope. And. No club, but how does Ben play this now? He's got the mitts straight draw and the mitts flush draw. And he's got ace high, which is, you know, has showdown value. It does have some. It's a one third pot bet here. And he continues his uh, open. I don't think we have we seen Ben limp. I don't think we have. I seem to have maybe maybe he did, but I'm not very 100 seldom. sure. Yeah. Very seldom. <clears throat> so we saw a call of the C bet with King High, then a lead. On an eight, which couldn't have changed much. <laughs> And then hits it on the river. And uh, yeah, puts, puts Ben in a bit of a pickle because again, it's um, compared to the pot, it's not huge, but it's not a one big blind. It's so what, about a quarter, a little over a quarter pot? Yeah. Well, so, uh, yeah, Ron's uh, kind of climb back into the lead here. Those... Uh, Winning that, that, uh, hitting those trips, winning that pot, and then hitting yep. that river here. Uh, yeah, and then, and then getting paid, and then getting paid. Yep. On that river. Yep. So that really, really helped a lot. And it's interesting, you look at this match compared to the last match, and 
the last match, obviously, two very aggressive players going after each other hard. Mm -hmm. And here we have, it's kind of like a little jab here, a little jab there. No major uppercuts, just a couple of jabs here, a couple of jabs there. And no one's really uh, going over the top with the aggression. Right. Ah, there is a limp, see? There it is. Yep. Wonder oh, if he's um and, and we do get a uh, raise over a limp. Oh my. Uh his favorite uh bet size, one big blind. Yep, that was a quick bet too. This looks like a chop pot ready to happen. Nope. Not anymore. <laughs> well, if there's a king, king on. Uh, uh, or an eight. King River. Or an eight. Eight, eight. Yeah. eight would chop it. Now he's limping with King Four. I wonder if he's uh, adjusting to the stack size, or if he's adjusting to Ron's play style. Um, I, mean, I was thinking play style. Um, because that was I thought uh, when Ron raised before with Ace Jack, uh, that was kind of an anomaly, right? So I mm -hmm. think Ben. Can feel comfortable that if if Ron is raising, it's 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 not wide. It's not attacking his limp, just to attack the limp. It's it's more of the strength doing of it. his hand. Yep, the strength of his hand. Very good. So that is a good strategy then for Ben because he can get a. Again, it's it the pre flop is all about trying to. Um, Figure out the range that your opponent is playing, right? In mm -hmm. in any poker game, that's basically what you're doing pre-flop. Is trying to narrow the your opponent's range by the actions you take, whether it's limping or raising or three betting. Those are the types of things that you do to try to narrow your opponent's range. So maybe Ben has figured out something about uh, Ron's range, uh, range construction anyway, and how he approaches it pre-flop. And Ron's taking the lead again. expect a raise here. Yep. Yeah, I would think so. Yep, there it is. Does he call with a jack? Oh. Yeah, he continues with that limping strategy, even with a hand as yeah. strong as King Eight. This is this is interesting because it's it's a little bit uh inverted in that the uh uh, out of position player preflop is raising more than in position player. In that Ben is limping, and then uh, Ron is just checking his option, and then Ron, when he's on the button, is just limping, and then Ben is the one raising. Right. Yeah, I think Ben is getting into a a little bit of a rhythm where he's getting a better feel for what uh, Ron is doing. Mm 
again, a oh, limp. Interesting. The... Interesting that uh, that uh, Ben just checked did not did not three bet this one. A King Jack suited. I was surprised by that. Well, now he's uh, in big, big trouble. No, I think Run he just with folds. The flush. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just folds. <laughs> I don't think he's... <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay, so it's Ben's turn to to flop trips. There we go. Oh, and uh, Ron right. caught a piece of it. Goes for the race. I actually expect him to call yet. Yeah. And there's the call. The lead again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think Ben needs to raise it again. Oh, I think that's too much. I really think that's too much. <laughs> Trying to get a call from a king or a jack, obviously. Right, but I I think I I think you're forcing a jack like here to fold. Yep, and you're hoping he has a king and. Yeah, I think again these bigger bets in this match just really stand out. So I think uh, you're allowing uh, the other player to to make uh, easier folds when they're behind. Yeah, the bigger bets. Um, here again, Ron when, Ron flopped the world here, so. Top pair with a flush draw. I wonder the sizing. Does he go small? I think Ron typically goes small. Yeah. Right. Like a third, third pot. Yeah, without a heart. I don't see continue. Yep. Okay. I'm so again, Ben he's has. Lipping. Yeah, I think he's tanny slipping. It might be the stack size where now he's going into more of a limp want to see flops mode. Yep. Ron hits the turn, gets a flush draw and a pair. Yep. Discipline fold again from Ben, holding ace 10. Does he have a read on Ron that Ron is not going to bet without pair? Because um, we've only seen that's him bluff probably, once. Yeah, that's probably that is probably he probably thinks that yeah Ron must have something if he's betting uh, above one big blind. I mean, we've seen a lot of yeah. one big blinds from wide range. Uh, I mean, it happens uh, a lot, so it's it's going to be a wide range. But I think the bigger bet uh, definitely makes Ben think it's more value than than bluffs, right? Based on the sizing. Okay, so I think Ben can assume right now that he's ahead because Ron did not make any attempt at the pot on the turn. Right. But again, I'm not sure about this sizing. <laughs> if if Ron has nothing, then what does that bet accomplish? So holds so, a yeah. nine, maybe. Is that a merge bet? I think it is. <laughs> Where it folds out right. better and gets worse yeah. to call. Somebody call with ace high there, but folds a nine. <laughs> I don't know. Again, Ron gets there. He makes a bet. Yeah, you're going to call off. I mean, one big yeah. line. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those, so well, I guess I'm paying you. How aggressive. Uh, ben does size not to be 
aggressive with his fours. And again, Ron out flops him. Oh, but Ben says, I'm turning my third pair into a bluff. Except is it a bluff? I mean, what's he targeting? He's targeting overs, so. Targeting overs, maybe flush draws. Right. So he thinks he's ahead. But yeah. just trying to deny some equity. Yep, that's what I thought his bet looked like to me, too. Here we got him with the same hand. Um, obviously, Ben is out kicking a little bit. Yep. So... He could get some value, but I'm not sure if he... Oh, yes, he does. He decides he, he can get value. It's interesting. Uh, ben doesn't usually bet just one big blind. So... Ron is stuck between not knowing if he's bluffing or he has real value. Whereas when Ron is betting one big blind, um, Ben knows that he's got either he doesn't have any value at all or very little value, very thin value. Mm. And then when he bets bigger, Ben understands that he has more value and is able to fold up more often. So it's kind of a interesting dynamic between these two. You know, and heads up, it's almost this is one of the one of the uh, few times Ron has uh, raised preflop. He's chosen yeah, he's... queen Ooh. eight suited, and he runs into two pair, <laughs> and then doesn't do one big blind bet. <laughs> See, I think this was his opportunity to triple barrel bluff. He was going for his one triple barrel bluff for every game he plays, right? And you always <laughs> have to have one in there. All right. Maybe this was it, and it, it didn't turn off very well for him. <laughs> Again, I, 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 I think Ben maybe is raising a few times. I think, I think maybe occasional call might be, might be in an order. Well, one thing that Ben Ben's value bets are would allow him to do is to bluff more. Um, but has he? No, he hasn't. So, I, so I right. seen him bluffing so, at all. Right. So that's why. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm I'm thinking is uh, your big bets are getting folds. So all of his bets are getting folds unless Ron <laughs> has it. <laughs> So that's where I think there's an opportunity um, to do some bluffing on Ben's side and to get some folds from uh, Ron, who tends to try to, you know, keep the pot small, try to see as many cards as he can. Um, I think I think somebody could take advantage of that. I wish I would have considered that when I was playing him myself. In the heat of the battle, it's hard to <laughs> yes, definitely. it's hard to see some of the things that you can see when you're just observing. I mean, seeing the whole car is definitely uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely helps. But yeah, and you'll notice that a lot of times. Um, I know when I'm play when I played my match. At the end of a hand, you don't always see your opponent's cards, even if it goes to right. showdown. So um, it's a little difficult with this software to get a, a good feel to what types of hands uh, they're showing down, which um, which makes it a little difficult, more a little more difficult. 
What is this a hand Ron is going to choose to three bet? Yes, it is. Well, it's a two bet because uh, oh yeah, that's right. Ben Ben limped. Oh, he limped, rejammed. Wow, that is that is uh interesting. Because how often has Ron been been uh, raising over limps? So. He's hoping Ron has something mm -hmm. strong enough to call this. I don't think that was as tough a decision on Ron's part if he made it seem that I think 10 9 is an obby automatic fold there. It's a pretty looking hand, but you can't call an all in with it. And we chose to go with the one big blind there on the on the flop continuation bet of one big blind, which yeah, like it's that's yeah, interesting. It's it's follows the pattern we've said. There's a uh, oh, this might get fireworks. Oh, we might see uh, some here. Pair. Gets and a set. Gets a set. Now here, yeah, I do like because with middle set we unblock the top pairs, which right. Ron does have in this time, and so he can call it. Yep. Oh wow! But he he vaults. Wow. Wow, that's a very, very disciplined fold. Ah, uh, I, <laughs> I don't think I could ever fold there. And, uh, I... <laughs> Looks like Ben's going for the, uh, Smaller bets, trying to get some value, understanding that every time he bets a little bigger, Ron's been folding and he's not getting any value. So he's trying to trying to bet a little smaller, trying to get some hauls out of Ron. To be honest, I've probably fold two, three off suit reflop. I wouldn't even limp. <laughs> Ron doesn't know how far ahead he really is. I wonder if Ben was going to pull out the big bet, right? Yes, yes, he made he made the adjustment and went with the big bet. Wow! And this, this is what is, we've uh... been we've been we've been saying is the is the possible adjustment. Yep. We've been saying this is what he should have been doing a little more frequently throughout this uh, match because he's seen how Ron has been folding to his bigger bets. That was a well-executed bluff on uh, Ben's part. Mm -hmm. And with that, he's back in the lead. Yep. And when you have three deuce offsuit, you know you are not you are <laughs> you are definitely bluffing. You're you not are, yes. <laughs> oh, there it is again. What's he gonna do with it this time? 
Isn't there a certain name for this particular hand? It's called the Dirty Diaper. Ah. It came up in the uh, World Series Poker main event two years ago. Um, somebody, uh, there was a home game in Philadelphia, and they called it the Dirty Diaper, or Pennsylvania somewhere. Yeah, so, so and, somewhere. And uh, yeah. he, uh, he played it, and he got to play it on live TV. On, on the World Series of Poker. And all event. his buddies at home were watching. Oh, yeah. And, well, he had buddies <laughs> there, too, that were just, right. rough, just going nuts. And he oh. made it work. Uh, not only does he have a flush, he has a straight flush draw. Yes, he does. Ben has got the flush draw, paid high flush draw. Oh, that should be instamuck. Yep, I would think so, yeah. <laughs> Jax, let's see how. I mean, I think Jax is good enough for a raise, yes. Isolation raise. And he folds oh. a king. Okay. Oh, here, oh, they, this they, could get spicy. Yeah. I mean, if it were the previous match, this this the money would have gone all in <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah. But in this match, we're we're gonna see a more uh more modest pot here. More conservative approach, you mm -hmm. could say. <laughs> yeah, it's uh Interesting. He checks again with top pair. Good kicker. And Ben has to think that most of the time he's ahead there. Um, now he, he, I don't think. Now he has to. Yeah, now, yeah. I think we're going to see Ben fold here. Yep. So I think he's getting a little bit of a read on Ron as far as his betting patterns. A larger bet. Wow, this is like over a half pot bet. Interesting that that uh, Ben called that bigger bet. What? I mean, he only has uh, went over yeah. and. I guess he has a couple back doors straight. Right. He's got a gut shot now. That's not enough. And uh, Ron is back in the lead. Mm -hmm. Have a gut shot versus top pair. So it's interesting now that the stacks are a little bit shallower. Bets are actually getting a little bigger. We, are we, don't, they, uh, we aren't seeing the 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 one big blind bets as as often now. What are they? You know what? What do you think is contributes to that? Is it the fact that they've been playing for maybe almost an hour and they're considering that it might be time to? Uh, that was a. That was his triple barrel there, wasn't it? Wow. And this is what the first or second <laughs> open from the button? I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, he did it with Queens once and he did oh, it okay, and he yeah. limped with okay. Queens once. Right. So, yeah, oh, it doesn't wow. do, he doesn't do it very often. So then, uh, oh. so it's been checking the check raise. No, I would think. he's checking the nuts. And Ron's got a good hand to uh, probably take a stab at this. He's got the gut shot and the two overs. True. 
But the thing is, the thing is, is that you're not folding out better. You're probably folding out worse. Yep, he does go for the check raise. He does go for the big one. He is going for all of his. He's chips. going for the win. Yep. Uh, I don't. I think we're gonna see a fold. But I could see it being a. Uh, it is a decision. It's for your tournament life. Yep. Uh, you do have some equity, right? You're, you don't yep. want to admit. Could I can see? Nope, there it is. Ben could be doing it with just jack high, right? Just on a straight draw that you're oh, hitting. Sure. Yep. No, and Ron is. Uh... Again, opening over the limp, ISOing over the limp. So we're seeing Ron, yeah, um, yeah so more think, aggressive. Yeah, I think it is a is it is a it is a it is a uh, factor of the the point of the tournament and the stack stack sizes. Yeah, just maybe a comfort level with the smaller stacks as opposed to you know the bigger stacks. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to see Ron fold here, I think. Tough to make a pair in heads up, and uh, Ben has just made two pairs, so. Seeing Ben just click it back. It's going to be an interesting spot just to click it back. Yeah, see if you can induce Ron to make a move on it. No, I mean, yeah. We're just, I mean, you get some value from from a large part of his range. It should be an immediate fold here for Ron, I would think. Well, he he has been in some instance sticky versus the C bet. I think with this chip stack now, though, That's it's, he's, That's he's almost in a all-in or fold mode. So, um, and if you're not the initiator, it's very hard to do that. Correct. Does it go all in here? Here we go. I got a feeling they're going all in here. Yep. There's no way he can fold this hand. You can. You just press the fold button. <laughs> oh, but he pressed the call button. <laughs> he hex the king, and oh, and we have more poker. And we continue to play. Continue to play. Favorable turn to run. Does he raise nice. here? Or does he just call? He should probably just call to try to get a little bit more value on the river. I think he just calls. I think Ben would 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 oh, here. He's raising, so Ben should be able to get away from this pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like the bets are, are made in hopes that they have something just a little worse that they can call with. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's and maybe that's just like you said earlier, that we can see the cards. Right. So we can get a little better feel for. Um small bet. Yeah, see it's interesting he's going half pot. 
Whereas before he would bet one big blind into a pot. Yeah. Ooh, just went ahead now. Interesting to see what the bet size is here. Yep, half he's just going half pot. So tough for Ben to get away from that because he yeah. did that uh when he had to fail and and then Ron hit the king on the on the turn, which right. is not real apparent. Oh, what's check check? Interesting two pair and you check that. That's that was I think a, you might have missed a little value I, there. I I thought I think and I think Ben would you know a smaller bet Ben would have would have gone ahead and called. This is interesting. A donk with absolutely nothing. And of course, we can see that Ben has pocket queens. He's not going anywhere. Remember, what's a is a raise of his. His run shifted gears into raising his his uh free flop his better hands. Nope, he sticks with no. He's still still limping him. strategy. Yeah, this is definitely some small ball poker here. Ron's probably feeling a little more comfortable now because it's not as big a deficit. Yeah, they're, I mean, one one medium-sized pot in there even. Uh, yep. Actually, one small pot in there even. Yeah, if Ron wins this pot right here, they're even. Right, right. Well, that is a, that was a bold face bluff. <laughs> he had absolutely no part of that. He was gambling that Ben didn't either. So Rob, I noticed you had a, a poll out. Yeah. We had our book study poll because we finished our last book exploitative play in live poker and we interviewed uh, the author himself i missed that i missed that how was how was how was that it was it's it's great talking to uh alex because he's mm -hmm. so you know you can ask one question and he'll he'll give you a very deep answer so you can really um you get a lot of information from very few questions for, with uh, Alex because of the way he approaches everything. He's so free with his information. Oh, and now look at this. We have a big turnaround between Ron and Ben. So anyway, it was a very good interview. And uh, so then... That means we're looking for our next book. Our book study starts on the first Wednesday of next month. Oh, so we have uh, Ben with the straight, straight. but yeah. Ron has a flush draw. And a straight draw, the gut shot, a tie. Oh, that would that would be a brutal. A six. A six would chop it. Unless it's a six of diamonds. No, I, I thought you meant that if the 10, 10 comes in, then he has a higher straight. Oh, yeah, that's true. So 
So I think, yep. Yeah, so I think he has to jam, it. and I think he might just call. No, I don't think he's calling. Well, the nine pairing. The nine it, pairing. It reduces the number of nines. Yep. Has... And the straight didn't get there if he had a 10, let's say. Let's right. say he was so betting he a, a 10. Didn't get there. Good fold. Uh, so anyway, yeah, the poll came out. We mm -hmm. did get a new uh, book, and we're going to be doing Excelling at No Limit Hold'em by Jonathan that, Little. That Jonathan Little one, yeah. And I say Jonathan Little, but it's not really Jonathan Little. It's like every poker author you ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> because each chapter is written by a different person. Right, right. And so you've got uh, mental game, you got tournament game, you got everything just kind of uh, pieces of everybody's expertise. Right. There's different versions of that that one because there's, I think there's uh, like how to beat tough no limit old games. Or, or, yes, or, yes. Yeah. This is the Original? first one that came out okay. and this one came out in 2015 is that right 2018 no 2015 okay. i think okay and uh it's nine years ago yep i believe that's what it was i have to uh i have to double check that All right, uh, he's still got him two to one. Ron does, so let's see what happens here. Ron's got absolutely nothing. Um, I believe our book here um, talks mainly about tournament poker. It seems um, they just they talk about six ingredients for a winning poker strategy and then lower buy-in tournament strategies. And then there was one called uh, moving up in stakes. So that could be maybe a cash thing. So I don't think it's focused either on tournaments or cash specifically. I think it's just a bunch of different short um, chapters written by different people um, on different subjects pertaining to poker. So it's not, it's not like a textbook if you want to learn poker from the beginning. This is probably not the book you want to read. But if you're already a poker player and you're looking to um, just do a little bit better and improve yourself in different areas, this might be a good book for you. So that was uh, uh, one of. I was just on the match. Uh, ben, Ben. Ben had a tough call with uh, two pair, but he made the call to. Yep. Yeah, to that's pull straight, about even. Pull that about straight even. looking him in the in the face was uh, a little a little scary. Yeah, so I'm looking yeah. forward to 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 that that book. Study. I think it's going to be a great book. I yeah. mean, we've got um, Matt Affleck does a chapter, Bernard Lee, Zach Elwood, Alex Fitzgerald, Olivier Biscay. Um, Will Tipton. Uh, then you got the mental game with Trisha Cardner and Jared Tendler and Elliot Roll, all people that we're all familiar with from different mm -hmm. uh, books and studies that we've done. So, yeah, it should be a very uh, entertaining book. Yeah, it was 2015. It was written in 2015, so nine years ago. But um, I don't think it is out of date just because of the type of content that it has. It's not real specific strategy. It's more overall strategy for different concepts. So um, it's a I think it's going to be, book, isn't it? Uh, pretty almost, I guess. Um, one of the chapters is written by Will Tipton and he talks about ultimate, ultimate or, optimal play styles so 
Will Tipton is one of the original, you know, GTO guys, I guess you could say. He wrote a heads up book that is very, very popular. So I think heads up was the first thing that was um, solved by computers was heads up poker. Uh, so that was before things like GTO Wizard, where now we are solving for, you know, regular tournament games, six max, eight max, 10 max, whatever. Um, but back in the day, the first um, match computer again. Oh, look at this. A raise with two, three offsuit against Ben's ace queen. He's hoping he has a big enough hand to call off. Obviously, he doesn't. Yeah, the first match of a computer versus a human was a heads-up match. So, and I think that was in around that time frame, around the mid-20-teens. Had a little internet in that thing, but I think I'm back. But yeah, I see you. I I, okay, uh, I hear you. Good. Look like uh, Ben raised a little bit bigger, isolating over um, Ron's limp this time. He went the three big blinds. So is he doing it based on the strength of his hand, or is he doing it um, knowing that Ron's getting a little more conservative? Or maybe they've been playing a while. He's <laughs> <Yeah>. trying <laughs> to build bigger pots. <laughs> um, definitely that that saying, right? Some things aren't sprints; they're marathons. Yes, I, I think this one uh, qualifies for the for the latter. You know, it's funny. I think that's one of the things that a lot of poker players don't realize that uh, a big part of the game is patience. And we all lose patience no matter what. When you're sitting there folding, folding, oh, folding okay. for three ace, hours. Ace king against oh, here ace we go. Jack. Okay. This but could be again, again, uh, we haven't seen a lot of three betting, so. Uh, with with different players, this might have this might have been fireworks pre flop, but here I it's... would think I would have been all in pre flop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how does he handle top pair, top kicker, facing the one big blind? Does it click it back or does he go for the big raise? He goes. For I would bigger well, raise, not a real big raise, but. Might be enough to chase them away. You know, we talk about how difficult it is to make a pair in heads up. It's also very difficult to have a uh, big ace. So when you have a big ace, you have a lot of value that uh, sometimes it's hard to get, get away from. Ben does decide with the uh, the raise over the over the limp. Yeah, it looks like he's doing a little, uh, getting a little more aggressive. Uh, now that he's got him dominated, he's trying to uh, force a little bit of the action. I think. Uh, now, how's Ben's turn to oh, hit flops, and he faces a, a donk. Again, the donk donk bets are, are getting bigger, and, and Ben <laughs> again responds with the big bet. 
I wonder if there's a timing thing as as well. I mean, he 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 was fast on this on this uh, Yeah, yeah. on this bet. So and usually Ron is very deliberate. Yes. And there's talk about timing tells even in uh, the online world, where if someone has an easy decision, they just click it. It's done. Right, right. So, if somebody has a more difficult decision, they might delay a little bit. Well, I think what I've heard is that the click, the fast reaction, fast decision, you can't fake that. And that somebody has a quick decision and, and they act on it, well, that means something. Whereas, like, if it's like tanking, well, you don't know if they just stepped away. Somebody, you know, Their their Yes. significant other came to talk to them, and they had to had to talk them while while they were close to timing out, or or somebody Right. came to the door, the dog came and was barking, and so they had to go and take care of the dog or something like that. So that who knows what what you know a delay might mean, but a quick decision is like you can't fake that that person Yes. did did Yes. act quickly. And I know what you mean there because I'm, When I'm playing, I'm usually playing three or four tables. Oh, And Ben decides to go with fours. Interesting. and King Queen might be a little tough to fold. Interesting because uh, Ron doesn't has maybe slowly increased his uh, frequency of opens, but I, I would still say argue that it's on the tighter Value heavy. range. Yeah. I would on the tighter range, so Mm -hmm. um that's interesting. It's almost like he's sending a message to Ron saying, Okay, Ron, I'm ready to I'm ready to get it in with you anytime. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> And a lot of times, if you have that image, um, you can really intimidate certain opponents. Oh no, I I I I have noticed that that if people know you are willing to get it all in, Mm hmm they might you know if it's a marginal open versus your blind, they they might mm, you know what I'll wait for a better spot. Yep. Yep. I've seen that in, in some of the cash games I play on certain opponents. Ooh, look at that. Oh, wow. And now Ron's back in the lead. Definitely contrasting of styles between the, the two matches. Oh, definitely. Um, but it has been interesting to see how their gameplay has kind of evolved. Like, like we saw a lot of limping, but now we're seeing uh, a few more uh, opens, a few more three bets. You Um, notice uh, Ben really slow played that queen that he had. Um, knowing that if Ron had something that beat the queen, he would have bet that turn and he didn't. So that left um, Ben very comfortable calling that river bet from Ron. So that's an interesting, um, he definitely had a read on Ron in that spot. Uh oh. This could get spicy. We got the Jonesy against the Jiggities. <laughs> yeah, and this and this flop, right? When you have a pocket pair, Yeah. probably not going anywhere. I think You're going Ben's to assume Ben's you're going going to to raise it. 
because oh no see i, I don't know i don't have a read there because he has had been like trying to deny equity and had been uh raising uh oh uh oh i can't believe he's just betting one each time yeah i think uh does he, does he hear a call here <laughs> I, he might not. Just, just, just. He, he could. Oh, yep, he is. He just uh, typed in "good luck all." That's his. Uh, he, that's what he does he, in the home he, game okay. when he's about to go in. I'll go all in. So <laughs> I believe uh, we're going to see him call this yeah, I... off. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, that's his signature okay, move. Okay. <laughs> all okay, I right. did not notice that. Good game, Ben. Yeah, I was down on yeah. the bottom okay, of the, good game, guys. Of the nice, stream there. Nice battle, interesting clash <laughs> of uh and adjustments throughout the throughout Yeah, there the was a, definitely a lot of uh cerebral I guess you could call it cerebralness that happening in that game. Um we weren't just overpowering each other, we were just playing very much small ball through that whole tournament. Um so let's see, we had Pocket Jacks won that one. Uh, we still haven't seen the Nine of Diamonds. So. We had somebody actually uh, Pocket somebody Jacks. Did. And it's our gal, JB Twin Cities. Joanne, oh, way to go. Congratulations. You congratulations. Uh, you can... Send an email to info at rec poker, and uh, we'll get you set up with a prize. Now the second or the third match. Third. Now we have Taylor, our own Taylor Moss, and our own Kim Kilroy. So we've nice. got Gopher Boy TJM in the home game, and Fergie fifty six in the home game. So. Um, should be a, the, two great players. I mean, two very accomplished players. Both of them have had a lot of good success in the tournaments. Um, we've seen, you know, if you're on the Discord, and I invite everybody to come on to the Discord, Rec Poker Discord channel, um, you can see Taylor shows up a lot when he's winning tournaments online. He's He's done some amazing things down in the poker rooms in minnesota so here we go um pet vet is currently in in ireland playing in the irish open so she travels a lot for poker so both very accomplished players let's see how they approach the heads up should be very good one it's hard to hard to vote against taylor in any of these matches but this is a this is gonna be a tough match for both of them i think um it could get down to who coolers who at the end here so you know I, I like to notice people's uh strategy of opening so kim win with two and a half Starting with a hundred big blind stacks, and she she chose to open with the two and a half big yep. blinds on the button. Yeah, I think you're going to see more standard um, type of openings here. Taylor goes with just the men with the two big blinds. I'm going to let you take over for a minute. Okay, okay. Eric, I got to step away. I'll okay, be right back. Yeah, and then Kim comes with the three bet and gets the fold there. So again, let's see where Kim decides on with the opening size. Yeah, two and a half. Um. Yeah, eight five offsuit. You're not gonna need to defend. You're gonna need to defend quite wide, uh, heads up. But eight four offsuit, that's uh, quite low on the. And similar here with eight two offsuit, that's quite low in your range. Yeah, can go ahead and let that go. Oh, pocket tens, nice. But unfortunately, based on uh, Taylor's hand, 
I'm not seeing her get much action here. So uh Kim takes a takes a few small pots. Uh and in six deuce offsuit. Not good enough for a call here. Let's see what she does with three yeah. four. We, we saw what flop. Ben did with two three. We have yet to see a flop. There we go. See a flop. She could go with just she could just bet range with a small, yeah, even with uh just the third pair. Mm hmm And I think we're going to see um, a little more standard play. In, in the last match, we might have seen a call there with any two cards. Right. And we saw um, Taylor went ahead and and, uh, yeah. and and we're seeing a three bet. So we're seeing yep. a little bit more um, yeah, Kim, Kim nuanced has, play, I yeah, guess you could say. So Kim has put in uh, three bets with just... Um, Offsuit Broadways twice. So once was the King Jack offsuit, and the other, I believe, was Queen Queen Jack offsuit. So putting that in her three bet range. Yep. And those are those are definitely good hands you know, for your three betting range, uh, especially heads up. Mm -hmm. Now well, she just turned a straight draw. Yep. Of course, Taylor's sitting there with a top pair. And the question is, does uh, this Kim fire again? I mean, you have no showdown value. Probably bottom of your range. That's an argument for firing again. Yeah, yep. And she does. But I don't, I, I don't, yep. Snap call. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he can never pull. There. <laughs> he, was, uh, he wasn't doing anything but but calling there. Didn't yep. didn't consider folding. Didn't consider raising. Just just yep. put in the call. Um, these are more typical heads up hands. Not not much going for either one. But uh, you know, heads up, you're going to play wide ranges. Yep. And uh, I think we're going to see both of these players for the most part. Well, Kim, when Kim they open the from the button, they're going to be opening for a raise. Yes. Uh, until Regardless get, of the hands. Yeah. Un until we uh, get maybe shorter stack. Then, right. And then a more limping uh, strategy might get employed. Well, Kim is going with the 2.5. Mm -hmm. Um Taylor's been going with the two, it looks like. Yeah. So. And Kim might, at certain sack size, she might adjust down to two. So. Right. Um, it might be that this is her larger, you know, 100 big blind stack raise at some point. She might adjust down to two. Maybe even two. She might even have a two and a quarter before she gets to a two. Right. Right. Oh, is Taylor going to take a stab at this one? The old delayed C bet. Yep. And about three it's quarters called. pot. And he could choose the double barrel, but I don't think it's going to work. Nope, probably not. <laughs> Tough to make a pair.
Yeah, Pet Pet might think she's ahead here because uh, it's been little to no betting. Mm -hmm. Queen High could be good. Queen High could definitely be good on a board like this. Yeah, if Taylor decides to. Uh, yeah, I think she's just checking. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Um, I think I have trouble checking down a hand all the way in a lot of situations, especially in a heads up match. I will usually take a stab at some point, but maybe looking at uh, the opponent, knowing what they're capable of might, you know, we might be a little more, risk averse and just check her down with something like pocket deuces like Taylor had. Right. And and it goes back to like are you what are you folding out? Sometimes you could think you're bluffing, but you're really bluffing with the best hand. Right. So on Thursday nights we we get together, you and I, Eric. Yes. And we, yes. We're playing a little thing called Peel. Yep. Peel. P E A L play, explain, and learn. So right. yeah, we play on this uh the same platform that we're watching uh Marek Madness being played on uh, on poker now. So we actually use the same feature of of uh um that we record it seeing the the whole cards up uh but neither when we're playing we can't see each other's hands but you know we have a recording of it and but as opposed to here where we're not hearing them we actually will mute each other but speak into uh for the recording our thought process uh, so that's the explain part and then uh Later on, we could watch the video and you can, you know, hear back what you were thinking and, and what your your opponent was thinking. So it's a really good time. Yeah. Okay. And then we, uh, a lot of times we'll get some discussion going on on the Peel Discord channel, mm -hmm. which uh, we talk about our decisions. And, and I've learned quite a bit from some of those discussions because I'm not really a cash game guy normally. I've spent my entire life playing tournament poker, so, um, so you yeah, get so some knowledge from people like Eric and like Jamel, who uh, joins us quite often, and their insights are definitely worth considering and worth learning from. So we'll both have a pair here, but uh, not 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 nobody has a heart. So yeah, this but, is gonna be tough. Ooh. But Taylor has heart in betting. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have the card, but he has has heart. <laughs> so do you think he did that because he felt that that would have let out if she had a single heart? Not sure. Uh yeah, because either they have the flush or they don't, right? There's no, right. no there, you're not drawing to a flush. You either have it or you don't. Correct. Um, well, you're drawing to a chop flush. <laughs> Nobody has. <laughs> <a heart. laughs> I don't think uh, that quite counts, though. So. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a bet we don't see that often. Is um, Somebody betting into a four flush board without the, uh, you have to really have a read on how the hand was played out mm -hmm. and what cards you think your opponent doesn't have, which are hearts. Uh, maybe you got to read that she would have played it differently on the flop and on the turn if she had a heart in her hand. 
at least a big heart. Right. Or, or maybe, yeah, exactly. Or maybe, you know, you, you might be trying to fold out a, a baby, right? Right. A very That's small I mean. heart. He could, yeah. yeah. A small heart might have, you know, three or four hearts in there might have folded. No, Taylor's got the gut shot. Not much else. And I don't think a bet's going to work if Taylor chooses to. No. Nope. So I think King High, I mean, the way it's played, oh. Kim is betting. Is she betting try to get Queen High to call? Yeah. Ace I may have. Uh, I don't think raised, Ace I is so, folding. Right, Ace I is not folding. Right, but Ace I might raise there. Right. Well, Ace High, I think would have. You're saying he, that we would have heard from Ace High previous. Yes, I think oh, okay. we may have heard from Ace High, and yeah. and on a paired board like that, Ace High is a lot of times the best hand. Right. And uh, a lot of times, people will make a bet to try to take somebody else off a chop so kim now has a flush draw straight draw and she made ah uh, it was almost a straight flush draw but almost a straight flush she does have the straight she mm -hmm. has a flush but it's not a straight flush correct <laughs> but straight it's good enough to win yes. it's good enough to win plenty good enough to win if she mess it makes this bet small enough do you think Taylor can call? Like if she just cl clicks one, one point. Oh, she gets. It's way too big. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think you can call here. There's just too no, much it's... there. Four straight, four flush. Everything's every other card is higher than his. He's got the five, so you can't call bottom pair here. At least I'd be surprised if he did. I, th I think there's a little table talk, a little, little banter, a little like uh, <laughs> see some smiles and and hitting this flop. She Not seems to be. Top pair, hitting a little but, bit more than than yeah, not, not only the top pair, but a couple of the back doors. Back doors. Yep. So she's definitely not going anywhere. Do you ever check raises? Oh, yes, she she does. Taylor betting the back door flex draw, but not much else. Nope. Can go with the no. Oh, she introduces an limping range. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, effective stacks are right around fifty big blinds, and she started limping. So to me, it looked more like she's limping with that style of hand than the chip stacks. Well, she's bottom range. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs> Only the dirty diaper is worse. Yep. At least she was suited. <laughs> it was suited. And uh, Taylor continues with the two big blind open. Taylor's turn to, turn to hit a flop. And about the one third bet size. Yeah, so what does Kim do here? Ace high, 
still with the limping or two and a half? Oops, back to the two and a half with the ace. Is Taylor seeing something there in her? That's because I think a jack would normally call there, wouldn't it? To her min, basically that's her min open because she's been doing right. it the whole time. All right, I mean her, it's her standard open for sure. Right, right. So checks. Well, there's a lot going on here. Hmm. Does he choose a bet? Okay. Oh, he's choosing. Just get his equity, and he hits his he straight. Hits his straight, but there's but, um possible flush yeah, out there. Yeah. See how he plays but, this. But Kim's not going anywhere. She might even oh, lead. She, yeah, she might bet out here with her top pair flush draw. No. Jacks. Oh, no. So, Taylor going to try to get some value uh, from yep. a heart? Oh, Kim just snap called. <laughs> yeah, she had too much of that board to yeah. fold. I think. I think it's a another bet. I think it's a bet fold. I guess Kim she could be trapping with a flush, but she probably would have raised. I think with the flush, wouldn't she, on the turn? Uh, I mean, you, you're right. Yeah. It could be a uh, it could a be trap, a trap, right. but I mean, yes. So how many traps? Right, he has to think how many traps, and he can. I think. If I were in the shoes, I would definitely bet and and kind of have a plan to fold if if raised on that river. On that river, yeah, yeah. I think so, so get, too. It's get a bet value fold. from something that you can call, and uh, yeah, I occasionally get bluffed, but I don't think often enough to shy away from that play. Yeah, I don't think um, I don't think Kim was looking at the straight as much as she was looking at the potential flush. Mm -hmm. And then when the flush, you know, when we had a three card flush on the board, it didn't scare her too much because she had top pair going in. Right. So um, I think that was a great um, thin value bet by Taylor getting uh, value from basically a six. And here we see her limping again um, with the 10-6 offsuit. So mm -hmm. she seems to have a range of, of uh, hands that she's going to limp with. Um, and then her stronger hands, her suited hands, Little Broadway type hands are hands that she's going to go ahead and uh, raise with. I don't know if if Taylor's noticed that or not. Right, it's hard hard to tell, right? Because you we're seeing the cards. Uh, yep. He's not a lot. Most of these hands aren't going to showdown, so you're not seeing that. Yep. You're only every now and then seeing seeing that that showdown, seeing what somebody had. Yeah, and here. Again, 10 deuce offsuit, and she's limping off of 70 big blinds. Yep. And Taylor decides, nope, that's, that's an ISO. Yep, he's going to isolate with his uh, suited connector. So. Have we seen Taylor limp at all yet? I don't think we've seen Taylor limp uh, from the button. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think that. so. So I think he's uh, he's playing basically. If he's going to play, he's going to play for a raise. Right. And they both hit a jack. And right now, Pet Bet's kicker still plays. <laughs> Board, anyway. 
Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it doesn't. Now it's just Jack against Jack. It's a oh. everybody loves a chop oh. pot, right? That's a yeah. It's a Taylor got it. I'm lucky there with that river. I think it's a, it's a standard call for for Kim. Yep. Yep. And now they're singing Everybody Loves a Chop Pot, yep. right? I can hear Jim <laughs> sing it in, in, from Ireland. Yeah, Kim's in Ireland right now, and with Jim and Elizabeth and Stewie, and there's a guy named Eric Ebsen, who is from Minnesota. Um, is he, is he allowed? That's... I thought only people from Canada was. Well, evidently, you can come in from Minnesota and oh, go okay. to the Irish Open. I okay. I really didn't know. Wow. Maybe he got an invite, personal invite. Okay. I'm not okay. really sure how he did it, but... <laughs> So there's a few people over there um, that are related to Rec Poker uh, making a splash. Jim yesterday came in sixth, sixth in a tournament, in a six max tournament. In a All six right. max tournament, he was on the final. Actually, made the unofficial final table at seven, and then of course made the final table at six. Uh, Joel Stapleton was in that mix also, and I believe he came in like fourth or something. And uh, so Jim made a splash, got to the final table, and and Pet Vet, our own Kim Kilroy, also cashed in that tournament. So, and according to what's what I've read today so far, Elizabeth is making a big splash in a of course tournament Elizabeth. today. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's actually the <laughs> the least surprising news. Yeah, Elizabeth yes. <laughs> running deep in the tournament. She she's, she's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. She uh well, this could get a little spicy. There might be a little action here. I don't know that she can fold uh, with a gut shot. No, I don't think spice. I think pair. we're gonna see small bets being called. Oh well, yeah, actually with two pair now, maybe Taylor bumps it up. Yeah, not a lot. Still a little less than half pot. Just under half. Yeah. That was an unfortunate run out for, for Kim. <laughs> <laughs> she hits a turn. So she uh, yeah, hits enough to get to uh, to call something. And then Taylor gets River's two pairs, so now he can bump up his bet a little bit. And she enough for her to call but a three bet from him there and then a fold so now 2.3 so she's lowered her opening a little bit now now that she's in the sub 60 stack or actually we're in the sub 50s um effective yeah Ooh, this is uh top pair versus second pair. Yeah. Heads up, right? They're yep. both thinking it's hard. it's hard to make a pair. Yeah, exactly. Hard to make a pair. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like I like him sizing. It's 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 targeting the exact hand that Taylor has. Yep. Trying to get called by a king. Now the flush gets there. So does that slow her down? And a potential flush or a straight cut there also, right? Three, four. Yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> I guess so. I mean, is he calling? Well, the we gut saw the shot dirty twice? diaper in the last <laughs> in the last match. <laughs> Three four is actually a better hand than the dirty diaper. 
And again, another three bet. Three bet. Um, this time with a suited variety. So this is a more yeah. traditional uh, hand to three bet. I think get a defend. And and Taylor is happy that he defended. Yeah, this is a type of uh this is a type of flop where as a pre-flop aggressor, you're going to have to put a C bet out there, a small one. Ooh, now this this could slow things down a little bit because <laughs> any king, queen, or jack of diamonds um is now beating Taylor. All right. So Taylor has a double good shot straight flush draw. That's true. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a bad card for 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 Kim. But fortunately, yeah. like you said, the 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 turn card slow Taylor would it's gonna slow Taylor down. Right. And it did slow uh Kim down also because it went check check on the turn, which kind of says I don't have a flush to uh Taylor. I think, yeah, I think Taylor can can bet. Small. And I think it's going to be a fold. Um, he can bet, but I don't think he's going to get any value from this. That's flush. like five or six, and then maybe no, oh, he goes, he polarizes. Yeah, maybe. Ooh. Oh, uh, no, I think maybe. that's a fold. Yeah, decided to polarize. Hmm. Problem is, uh, he's got a lot more bluffs in his range with this type of size bet. And she saw him do it before on a four flush board without the flush. So well, she doesn't know. She doesn't know that he didn't have the flush. I I think they I think they were talking. Well, you can you I can say all you talking. want. You can say all you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not sure if he actually showed it, but yeah, I don't know that he did either. Yeah. Normally, now, do you show cards? That's a question for you. Oh, you mean when I play play live or online or either? Both or, either. Uh, online, I don't actually. Uh, first off, like on uh, on the side I mainly play, I actually have that feature turned off to because I think it wastes time. Because they asked you, do you want to show or not? I'm like, of course I don't right. want to show. I, I just got tired of yep. pressing that. I was like, so I just default, like, it, it's just, I don't show. <laughs> just Even right. if I wanted to, I couldn't because I have <laughs> have the feature turned off. And then on Poker Stars, I do have it enacted, but I'm always too slow to, <laughs> to do it. Yeah, to that, do. it goes pretty fast on Poker yeah, Stars. Yeah, yeah. And so. And then live, I, live, no, I, I, Barely, very rarely show. Very rarely show. I did. I did get somebody go. You know, somebody just. I uh, kept asking. I was like, no, I, no. And they go, and the guy not in hand, but just kind of my neighbor's. Like, it's like, oh, you're one of those. Doesn't show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not friendly. That's not friendly, Eric. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm like you when I play. Basically, I play ACR, um, mm -hmm. and they have a feature where you can show your cards. You can show one or both, and I've I've turned it off, so I never see it. But I see these other players are constantly showing their hand. Oh, look what I had! You know, it's like, <laughs> okay, great. It's two cards. Anybody can get those two cards. So. What's so special? <laughs> and it's uh it's kind of funny. So it it it's definitely a tell of some sort of their mental attitude, I guess, or how they're mm -hmm. approaching the game. Yeah, how they think about the guess. I agree. And sometimes in home games. Um, home game to me is, you know, a group of people getting together, regardless of where it is. That is not sponsored by a casino. Any of those types of games, um, I 
there's a more of a tendency to show cards because it's yeah. more of a friendly type of atmosphere and right. well um, the thing is at a casino guess what that player can't bar me from coming back yep in a home yeah, game that's true they could like you know what this guy's not very friendly not fun to play with they they might not <laughs> ask you back unless you're unless you're the host of the home game <laughs> that's well that's true too that's true uh, too uh so yeah Yeah, I don't think that's... Oh. Uh, so that one thing there. I will do, I if it gets to showdown, I will usually just show my cards. Like, no, yes. I, I won't do the thing of, oh, who's supposed to show you? Oh, I called you, you're supposed to... You know, we, you know, we check, checked on the river, and, and then, no, because it's, I'm just like, yeah. holy crap. <laughs> yeah, we could sit I, there for an hour waiting yeah, for somebody I'm, to show I'm their I'm a hand. big believer of, like, the let the cards speak. Just roll it over, yep. let the cards speak. And... I'm also paranoid in the back of my mind of like, of like, uh, I might misread the hand. I might have a good hand and I might. <laughs> I have, um, I can admit that I have done that. <laughs> I have folded the, the winning hand inadvertently <sighs> because I didn't do what you just said. I didn't table my hand. I looked at the board and I looked at his hand and I said, oh, crap. And then as I threw it away, I realized, wait a minute, I just hit my gut shot straight that I wasn't even looking at. You know, I might have had a flush draw or something that didn't come in, but the card gave me would have gave him gave me a straight and I would have beat his set or two pair or whatever the hell he had. Yep. So I've done that before. And it's it's kind of fortunately, no one knows that you did that. So you don't have to tell them. <laughs> two pair for two pair for queens. Uh, 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 queen five for two pair for for Kim here, and she just check calls, just check calls and trapping, trapping. He's got ace high, so he's got to feel pretty good because she just oh, he um, decides to polarize. Called. Going with the three quarter size yeah. bet. Yeah, the same to fold out like if she had like an eight or maybe even a queen with a weak kicker. But nope, two pairs not going anywhere. Nope. I think he gives up. I think, I think. Yeah, I think he I has think he to here. Gives up. Yeah, I remember playing uh I think it was I think Bollies, which is now the horseshoe, but it was still oh, Bollies yeah. at yep. the time. I played there before. Yeah, just uh it's just one three and I just I, I think I just sat down. So I didn't know any of the players in the blinds and somebody just limped. So I just checked my option with uh I think I had like seven three offsuit. <laughs> and so it just went check, check, flop, check, turn, flip, check, river, check, check. I have seven high. And so I flipped out my, flipped over my cards. Now the person that limper, she almost folded. And oh, yeah. she, she almost folded and then she looked and then she was confused. And then she, why did you over. show us? Yeah, she fold, she then she showed queen high for the winner. But I had done it so confidently. She just like <laughs> it was it was funny. I was like I was like I almost won with seven high. This was, oh, but oh. <laughs> But the thing is it's like yeah, people like are embarrassed, I don't know. I was like, yes, why am I embarrassed? Yes. It went check check. I was in the big line. I don't care. I mean yeah, I'm gonna right. flip it over. <laughs> That's one thing that Alex talked about in um, our recent book, Exploited Playing Live Poker. He was ex trying to exploit those types of players. Oh, Jim got there on the, yep. on the turn. He had a couple of, um, looked like a chop chop ready to happen, and oh, she got there on the turn. Side to the lead. Interesting, interesting lead. So, what Alex was talking about is that there's people out there that um, um, they're called fallen. Heroes. All the heroes. Yep. 
and they are there to not embarrass themselves. They're, they they want everybody to assume that they know what they're doing, and so they don't want to do anything that makes it makes them look foolish. I wonder if this is a limping hand or a folding hand by Kim. This thinks she yeah, normally limp, limps yeah. these types yep, of hands. It is yep. limping hand. Yeah. I was just wondering if it's weak enough that she might just like maybe it's not even worth a limp, but I don't know that she's actually folded anything pre flop, has she? Not Other than against not, a race. Right, right, right. Not uh, I guess not. I don't think she's ever open folded from the button. Oh, we got a little domination going on here. A king high flop. She, would be... Does she three bet this? She has been three. Yep. She might. Yeah. Yep. There it is. There it, there is, it is. There it is. Yep. Let's see. Call with the king. Yeah, she's been three betting all of her broadways. Yeah. All of her pairs. Um, suited aces. A lot of her aces. I mean, I think even like her junky aces with the yeah. blocker, with the blocker property yeah, of having an ace, she's been using that as a three bit. And here she got there again right away. Top pair. Oh, he's got a little something something here. He's got um, backdoor straight, backdoor uh, flush. There his now he's got. He's got the open ender. No yep. flush anymore. <laughs> So he could uh, call on one more bet here if it's reasonable. Does he ever? Does he ever make it a a, a bluff? Could raise here? Sure, it would be a good uh, semi bluff spot. Yeah, if you semi bluff there, you've got an opportunity to hit your straight or to hit a jack, which would give you the hand and give you top pair. Mm -hmm. So. There was a lot of opportunity there. Ah, this, okay. Ooh. Definitely a three bet. And I can see Taylor definitely defending. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Well, she's going to put them all in. She, 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 she says, okay, my three bet size at this stack depth this effective all of stack it. depth is all of it. <laughs> it's all of it. King Queen is tough to get away from. Yeah, that's, um, that's yeah. You know, you could be up against a pair of jacks, a pair of tens, and you'd be happy to get it in with King Queen, right? Oh, with a there. in a flip. There it's it is. Going on. There's the flip. King Queen. Oh, King is not going to help. It's Queen and Queen. No. Oh, there it is. There it is. Match is over. Kim. Kim takes it down. Kim takes and it down. I think at the beginning I said this is probably going to end up with a cooler situation. And I think um, you get two big hands like that in that stack size, and that's what you're going to end up with, right? Yep. Now, it looks like King Queen or Ace King was the winning hand this time. Uh, did anybody have Ace King in the chat? No, no one had he... Ace no. King. So it's too obvious. There was no, and there was no nine of diamonds. Nope. So here we go. It was a great match. Uh, Kim, congratulations to Kim. Um, I think so, it was you know it, it played pretty pretty regular, pretty normal. I think I don't think there was anything really um, anybody could do about it. It just sort of happened. So I think uh, Taylor and Kim, great match. Yep. Mm hmm. Now we have um, our last match, which is John Somsky our and Joey Ingram. MN. Yes. Poker Geek MN. And... I'm going to predict somebody, uh, first name starts with J, is going to win. That's my really? prediction. Yes, that's, that's my really, prediction. Uh, that's really bold of you right there, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be a good match. Um, obviously, Joey Ingram, everybody knows who he is. They call him Poppy, right? Yep. Happy. Um, and of course, and, John, our own John Somsky, Poker Geek MN, in the home games, and he's the person who makes the home games possible. We play uh, 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a uh, couple games on Saturday, and another game on Sunday. So there is lots of home game action you can take part uh, in, along with uh, myself on occasion. Um, Eric plays in it. Taylor plays in it. Kim plays in it. A lot of the players you're seeing here today play in our home game. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and John does an excellent job of running the whole thing. So should join us. It's a lot of fun. Oh, and yep, they've taken Here their seats. Go. And we're off. All right, let's see what kind of All right. sizing these guys use. Well, we already got two playable hands. Yes. We're definitely going to see a flop. All right. We had an open, normal open, two and a half big blinds. And then a little over a third C bet and a fold. Pretty standard. Yeah. No, we had a limp right off the bat from uh, Joey with the 5-9. So he's incorporating a limping strategy right away. Mm-hmm. So we're going to see hands that are going to be in the limp all range, hands that are going to be in the limp fold range, and hands that are going to be in the raise fall and raise fold range. So he's going to have uh, he's going to have a very diversified range. It looks like from um, what we've seen so far. Oh, now he's going with a two and a half. Call oh, ooh, with a and he, and John just smashes the, the flop. I mean, he isn't going nowhere with middle pair and nut flush draw. Interesting C bet size from Joey there. Just one one big blind, so he's not uh, not attacking that kind of board with the type of handy he had. I wonder if it changes with uh, different ranges. Mm -hmm. Or if he plays more of a trappy type style, where you know, like like we saw from Ron, where he just a lot of right. one big blind uh, C bets. So, not much of anything for either player except aggression by John takes it down. And that's the thing about John. He, I don't know how many times he's taken me out of the home game. But he is aggressive. <laughs> he's very tough and he's very aggressive. So the advantage that he has by doing that is he's getting folds with his bluffs, as we saw right there. Mm -hmm. And that was the uh, prime example. If you're willing to risk that, um, you know, use that aggression, you can not only get folds from your bluffs, but you can get calls from your value. Yep. So that's, that's, uh, that's how, that's how poker geek does it. Yeah. Five deuce offsuit, not good enough for Joey to play. And no, it's reasonable. That's a reasonable decision there. Okay, so face card, he'll be opening with the uh, 2.27, I think, is what he opened there. Something like that. You know, we both know how this software works, so it's uh, it's not as easy to put in a specific bet size. Right. So if you use a slider, it just kind of slides over. Yeah. So I'm wondering, kind of he, I'm wondering if maybe... He's using chips instead of big blinds, you know, in yeah, terms of his displays. So, so maybe like it's an easy uh, amount of chips to type in. That could be too, yeah. Oh. And just uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. John? I think I might have <clears throat> I might have tried a little value there. Yeah. Yeah. Like a put like a blocker bet in. Could we see That's a three bet? Yes. That's big, four times. He's yeah, it's a times. kind of a cash game uh deep stack sizing there. Oh, and he, again, he's got another big hand. But he can't hit. But John, of course, smashes it. <laughs> <laughs> this might oh, slow man. things down. This Poker might... is such a horrible game, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this might slow things down a bit. Yes. But uh, it didn't. It didn't. Oh, now he gets counterfeited with counterfeited his two pair. But he's he's still not going he's anywhere. He's still still yeah. way ahead. <laughs> but yeah, when you when you make two pair and then it gets counterfeited, uh, it's not a great feeling because now you know any good queen would have been ahead of of John. But right, uh, Joey digging deep into the Jack Seven suited for a three bet. Hmm. That's uh, yeah. This is a, a lot more aggressive. Yes, this is definitely. Uh, we're coming in for. We've seen already. A few three bets. Okay, John is getting. He's sticky with his king high. Uh, Joey has a better king high. And hammers it. Yeah, and that's got to fold out, John. Yeah. Exchanging blows back and forth. No one's actually taking any. Yeah. So as much as uh, John has been smashing flops, actually Joey's been lucky because he hasn't had any piece of it, so he hasn't had had to pay him off. Yeah, right. So is Joey C bet with Queen High? Oh, he, he overbets with the Queen High. Wow. You get a lot of pulls. Now, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. We've been talking a little bit about overbets uh, right. recently, and uh, people don't use them very often. Well, it's becoming definitely uh, a bigger part of the game uh, for oh, sure yeah, the last definitely. few years. Yeah, I mean, it's it, there's more uh, people doing solve work and people. Uh, having it in their arsenal so it's 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 becoming a, a larger part of the game but but you're correct in that uh it's hard to pull that trigger on that so um not as many people do it as maybe in theory should be happening yeah i've i've been trying to do a lot more of that that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons i'm playing um the micros mm -hmm. is because i can try different strategies right. and try to incorporate them and try to add it into my, um, into my strategy. So it's kind of interesting because I've been using some over bets and I've been keeping track so I can go back later and find out, well, should I really be over betting in this spot? You know, cause time it's, it's hard to really know if you should be over betting in those spots, right? Unless you really have a feel for the player pool. Right. Or right. that individual player. Too much is influenced by the results, right? Yes. I overbet. <laughs> I overbet with my bluff, and he folds. Oh, I see. It was a great overbet. <laughs> yeah, was it? I, I, I over I overbet with with my value, and he folds. Oh, that was a terrible overbet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seven deuce suited. I think he stabs here. Yeah, I think that board favors um, his particular hand. And he smashes the turn. 
Oh boy. <laughs> Bottom pair. Uh, did uh did John get a straight on the <laughs> looks like it. Wow. <laughs> and he goes for the over bet. And he gets a fold. See, that's a terrible over. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Is it though? Yeah, no, no, I'm just kidding. What what hands right, call exactly there? exactly. I mean an ace would call there. So if true. Joey had an ace, true. he would have hit the right. wheel. Right. right. John had the six eye. Right. I know that's happened to me before. The old how many sixes do they have in their age? Oh, they don't have any yeah. six. Yeah. <laughs> but guess what? They have the six. Yeah, I was at a tournament. Flop. Oh, the and wheel. then is, is Joey's... Did Joey get this straight on the on the river? I, it looks like he might yeah. have, yeah. Yeah, and it's his turn to... to, to Let's to, see what... To, to, oh, he's in, and he goes with the orbit. <laughs> John can't pay it off. He didn't. He no, he had anything. He had. <laughs> and they're back pretty much even. So they're just exchanging over bets. Yeah, this is interesting because this we is... haven't seen that. Yes. Uh, definitely, Joey has a higher three bet frequency than even uh, yeah. than even Kim. Yep. Yeah, we've been seeing him do it with hands like this, like Queen Nine. Even it would be. He's, he overbets or three bets those. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see a bet here from Joe. Yeah. It's interesting that texture, he goes small, but a different texture. So he, he's gone big. So. Is it because of his uh, what he assumes John John's range is under these different situations, or is it his Our, specific hand? Yeah, I'm not not sure. Not sure if it's like how he perceives how the board is, you know, who who the board favors in terms right, of ranges, right? Or whether his specific hand. Okay, yeah, so these now these are the typical hands that we expect to get three bet. Ace Queen, Ace Queen. Uh he's gone with the after a three bet, he's gone with the big bet. Oh, and he's <laughs> and if you if you know yeah, that you're gonna that. smash the turn, well <laughs> why not? Well with ace queen on a board like that, you expect to get a lot of folds. Does John turn into no oh, he, he's not gonna turn into Muffy. So now Joey takes a commanding lead. Yeah. But John getting big hands. Just needs to continue to hit and get back in it. Oh. Joey. It's never going anywhere. He might even put nope. this in. Calls or check raises? Just calls. Oh. And. Oh, he, he didn't has... get there, did he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course he did. Wow. So do you like this lead? Hit. Do you like that lead? Or, or do you. Do you think he should just check and let John keep betting? Well, checking does show weakness, right? And if you expect your opponent to uh, if you expect your opponent to stab a lot. Right. Just give him a little rope. Okay, bottom pair. Small bit. Gets the job done. So 
John is behind. It's a about a four to one chip stack. Four to one, yeah. Deficit. Um, he's got he's he's got a lot of work to do, but I. And heads up, it just takes a you know just takes a one cooler hand, one just big hand to to flip the script. So. Yeah, that's a fact, and uh, yeah. no, no, I wouldn't John, count him out yet. Nope. He tried to get there. Joey tried to get there. He didn't <laughs> quite. <laughs> so I wonder what Joey's three will do with sevens. Like, is it? I think this might be a three bet. Don't you? Oh, oh wow. He's... <laughs> oh, he wants to put them all in. Yeah, wow. He's, that's that's using your big stack, right? He can afford it. Yep. And just put the pressure. Well, in a hand like sevens, um, usually you're in a some sort of a so, flip situation. Interesting right? here. The same hand. Let's see who wins the pot, right? If, if you can your opponent and you both have the same hand then uh you played it a little better but i i think i think we're just going to see a showdown and everybody loves the chop pot <laughs> yep Oh, I wonder if they're singing the song. Yeah, I don't. Okay, think so, so it's threes. Is that <laughs> is that a three bet? Yes, I think he okay. will three bet. Okay, here it is. Do you think he's always three betting that I, at this effective stack, or because he has such a commanding? I think commanding it's because lead. he has such a commanding lead. Yeah, yeah. He's seeing if he could get John. <laughs> to right. bite on that bet. Right. You know, he's he's like you say, he's in a flip situation. Right. Maybe he can, you know, win the tournament right, right then and there. As well and if not, it, right. He's still well, ahead. Right. And as well at this stack depth, it kind of takes the weapon away of a four bet away from John. Yep. Right. Because if yep. he three bets to like say six or seven, then John can four bet jam. So you almost or take, Don take could just weapon. call and see a flop, right? And everything's going to be an overcard to Joey's true, true. pair of threes. So you don't want him to see a flop unless you got it all in. So is John picking up on something here from Joey? Sure. He's got a gutter now. Mm. Along with his pair. Yeah. Try to get some value. I mean, yeah. Try to get value from something. I mean, Joey's not paying. Yeah, but... yeah Joey's not paying. <laughs> paying, but but just the way it played, there's uh, you know he. He doesn't have an ace. He doesn't have a king. So, yep. Let's try to get value from you know some some kind of weak bluff catcher he might have. Ooh, they both have top pair and they want check check. John has two pair, and the five did not counterfeit him this time. Oh, I thought John would still go for value. No, four or nine. River the straight. Okay, John's uh, climbing back into it a little bit, and and one big pot for John comes John way. He'll he'll flip. He can quickly flip yep. this. Yeah, script. if we get it all in, it flips the script right yep. now. And we see Joey consistently with the three bets with those types of pants. Mm -hmm. 
You know, that was the King Jack suited last time. Pair of threes against a pair of fours. Oh, two pair against a pair and a flush draw. I don't think anybody's going anywhere in this hand. No. And yeah, I think it might go check, check. Yeah, or or he's getting, getting more getting closer even. to two to one again. Yeah, I mean two to one and heads up. That's that's the magic number, right? Where you, yep, you just immediate flip, immediately flip this completely. You saw Joey there folded pre from the button, hmm. so we haven't seen a lot of that from anybody. Uh, today. We've seen people, if they don't have a very strong hand, they at the minimum will limp from the button. Right. Um, there are hands that are definitely worth just folding free flop from the button. There are certain hands that's just not even worth it. It's a very small range. <laughs> there is there is a small range. You of look hands. at the grid. Yeah, little, it's little, that little thing right on the bottom middle, right there. <laughs> bottom it's middle about, where it's about they're size. not suited. <laughs> yep. They're not suited. They're not connected, so they and they can't suck. make straight. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's the hand where when you're we we're playing live, your neighbor folded, but it would have made a two pair. So he, I would have had two pair. Yeah, yeah. Folded three seven. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> but the flop was three three seven. <laughs> now here they both have the Doyle suited Doyles. Now, do I want one with unsuited hands? Is that is that? Yes. Am I remembering I that correctly? So. Okay. I believe so. Everybody, you know, questions why is ten deuce the hand that he won with twice? Well, it's heads up. <laughs> it's heads up. You yeah. can see what's happening here. It heads up. There, everybody's playing ten deuce. I mean, those are just hands you play. But when you look at it in the uh, realm of a normal poker yeah. tournament, and when you're in the middle of it, then deuce doesn't get played yeah. very often. And and to be honest, uh, if I were to make, win the main event, I wouldn't be picky of what the winning hand would. No. That, that would, yeah. I wouldn't go, ah, uh, eh. I don't, I don't want to be have the photo of me holding these two cards to win. Millions of dollars. Never mind. Let's do it over. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to win with ten deuce. <laughs> Wait till I have pocket. It's aces. too cliche. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's a big hand. I think we might see a three bet here. Uh, I yes, and but I don't think. Uh, John's calling, but no, I no. could be wrong. He might. Well, it, it wasn't in his uh, four bet bluff range, so. <laughs> so big they seem to be enjoying themselves bet. too, don't they? Yeah. So he goes with the small bet, the quarter pot. John obviously has to fold. He has absolutely nothing there. Yeah. Oh, what about the this Jonesy? Is, this is is this a great hand? I mean, certainly we this, got the Jonesy. This, certainly, you can four bet bluff for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Okay. Uh, I don't think Joey's going anywhere with a pair. Oh. oh. Now he does pick up the straight draw, but uh, without a club, yeah. not feeling great. Yeah, I think uh, it'll go check. Now there's John Bluff. It. Does, we'll does he bluff it. at it? No, he does not. Back to a little uh, over three to one. Okay. These are the kind of hands I like. I like those uh, nine, ten, ten jack suited. Um, yep. The I noticed Joey's there. just called there. Suitedness. You know, he just called there with the ten jack this time and didn't uh he didn't three bet him. Yeah, I was I was wondering about that. I think he could tell that, that John was gonna throw call a three bet there, so Oh wow. Four deuce offsuit good enough for a call. I think I think Joey might have all flopped him here a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, John's catching up on the turn. Yes, he is. All he needs is a deuce or a four. And that, and let's see. Oh, no. He didn't even. There wasn't enough there. There wasn't enough there. He didn't have enough outs. And now we're at the uh maybe because of the effective stacks we're yeah we're now going to just a doing the min open. open. Yep. I think so. Hard to get away from pocket twos because it's hard to make a hard to make a bear. I did get rid of it. We must have a read on John. Yeah, I think about pocket twos, right? <laughs> There's oh, there was always overs yep. on the flop. <laughs> yep. Pair of twos against the uh, it's a gut shot and a backdoor Back flush. 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 <clears throat> Which neither one came in. Pair of twos is good, unless John decides. Really blasted. Yeah, John could John could try to uh represent something here. Oh, that's gonna be tough. Yeah, he does. It's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Joey's in the he he's like, wow. I think he's what do I to, beat? Yeah, he's trying to get some information. <laughs> he's trying to talk and get get some information. Yep. John looks pretty stoic there. He's not giving away <laughs> anything. Now was a little bit of a smile hits his face. Okay. Uh oh. Now he's not going to get paid for, with this big hand. Well, this time. unless, well, he should see a flop. Well, now he's not going to get paid. Go small bet. Oh, he goes, oh, he's trapping. Oh, but now he's, he's going to shut down. He's going to, like, uh. <laughs> Go for just the tiniest bit, just a little bit yeah. bigger, three quarter spot. A couple of nothing hands here. Let's see how they play them. I think John's going to continue aggression. Yeah, it's a good flop for um, yep, yep, the pre flop aggressor. Get a lot of folds. If he raises, no, he decides just to. Okay, so Joey limped that one. Mm -hmm. And John's just going to let him bluff. Slow bluff playing catch. his ace. John will bet. 
Joey will fold. So he calls with the suited cards and sees three overs and not his suit. John's getting it back to uh, two to one now. And Joey is probably the only one that's folded on the button most of the day in all the matches that we saw. Mm. There's certain hands that he just doesn't even want to go to battle with. And he just folds them yeah. pre-flop. It might be a good strategy because, as we can see, he, he does like the over bets. He does like the battle when he's in there. So, Yep. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't want those garbage hands in his range when he does that. Oh. Not pair good enough. Oh, yeah, Joey had the seven, but he just yeah, yeah. he just, yeah, third pair, yeah. All right, suited uh, king. Oh, they both hit a little of that flop. Oh, wow, the suited dirty diaper, but I don't think it's <laughs> called the dirty diaper. If it's is, it a, is it is it a clean diaper if it's suited? <laughs> I mean. Or is it a Huggies? Or I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> check, check, and they <laughs> three with the king kicker. Clean diaper? Maybe it's a clean diaper. If it's a clean suited. diaper. Hmm. <laughs> okay, let's see what he does with the flush draw here. Does he uh, go ahead and bet it? Yep. Discipline fold from Joey. Min bet, min open, suited Jack. So yeah, we're seeing some pretty standard, uh, standard play here. I like the I like the way both of these players are approaching it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they they want to give the other person some decisions. Yes, they, they don't want to make it easy on them. Uh, difficult to arrange. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> this well, this might be that hand flop. that that we said might flip it. <laughs> yeah, very good flop for uh, Joey, huh? <laughs> he got top pair, <laughs> and he's got the flush draw on top. No, John has a flush draw on top of it. Didn't need it. Yep. No. No. The only way it could be worse for Joey is if the river was a three, but I think he's still maybe uh he he uh, he might get away with it. I don't know. He's would well, John go that he's, big? He's, he's contemplating he's contemplating making a good lay down. See uh, oh I was about to say, the longer it goes on, the worse for him because he's going to talk himself into a, a bad, a, not a bad call, but into a call that, yeah, you know. And now John goes into the lead again. So, wow, okay, that was the one hand the you whole, called yep. it. You called it. I don't know that John can get away from Queen Jack. A couple of Broadways to even to the three bet. Oh. And look well, <laughs> okay. Uh, this is what we call momentum, whether it's a real thing yeah. <laughs> or not. This is <laughs> this is what it might look like if it were a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> and and you see it happening, you know. Yeah. Um, how often have you sat in a tournament and folded for an hour, and then all of a sudden you get four hands in a row that you want to raise? Yep. You know, it just it happens. Does Joey call with ace high? I mean, mm -hmm. he's with a busted flush draw out there. Yeah. 
like I said, if yeah, the longer the longer he waits, the is worse because he's gonna talk himself into a call. Fair yeah. enough. Because he wants to see it. John oh, wow. Slow played that wow. all the way down. Wow. wow. So this is it, this match is quickly just flipped. Yep. <laughs> now now it's John who can just be the aggressive and 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 put the pressure on Joey. Yep. Interesting three bet now with six eight offsuit. Dominated John's hand, so yeah, but <laughs> you don't know. That. Do you normally do that? No. Is it because of his no, chip stack? No. And he's trying to make it look like I'm willing to go all in. So are you? Right. Right. You know that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of bet it was. John try to no. I don't no. think you can value bet it. Yeah, you just take your show down. Yeah, semi bluff with the ten of diamonds there, so uh oh, Joey might three bet. He's been three betting his ace X. Yep. Does he jam it? Oh no, he doesn't jam it. Okay. He got trapped. three bets. He just trapped. He traps him. Oh. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I mean, you well, just, what are the odds that cool. John has pocket kings? Because there's a king on the board, so there's a blocker out there. But we all know blockers aren't real. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joey could definitely day. think ace high is good here. I think if he makes it small enough, he can squeeze a little bit out of him. <clears throat> uh, he's folding. Yeah. Yeah. See, a snap fold. That's when you make the <laughs> snap yeah. decision. So what stack depth does... Joey go all in with Ace King there. Oh, pre you mean instead of instead of yeah, yeah instead of reason. the open from seventeen big blinds. I usually use standard of ten, but uh, I can I can see it as high as twelve and as low as and maybe even that ten. Maybe you can just min open. Trying to induce a jam. Heads up, yeah. Okay, let's see. There it is. He op he opened well, he three bet shoved with the ace jack there. And now interesting, he's got the jack seven suited and he just uh limped in. Trying to see some flops mm -hmm. cheap. I think John calls with his ace high, yep. Oh. Yeah, I think so. And then Joey gets there on the turn. It's kind of bad. He's yeah. gonna have to bet again. Yep. Small targeting his exact hand, and Ace High is gonna call. <clears throat> Didn't go for thin value on that river. It it's tough. Like what's I mean. I guess you're aiming for exactly John's hand, ace high, but yep. other than yep. ace high, nothing else is really, nothing that you beat is calling. Right. Does he jam here? Yeah, does he jam this? No. I think he it limps. could be a jam. No, this limps it. Oh. Oh, my, my. That John didn't get yeah, any of this, yeah, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, he could bet it because he's unblocking. Top and second pair, but yep. yeah, but hoping he has a king or a nine. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you bet. If somebody doesn't have anything; they're gonna fold. So jam this. 
Oh. John opens the Woolworth. Oh, wow. Oh, yay. Could this be a cooler type hand? Top pair against like a straight draw? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think Joey's he's calling, not calling it. Yep. Anywhere. I, Call think, I think, yep. I think. Does John call here? He's yeah. got backdoor flush and the open ended straight draw. I, th I think he does. Just looking at his expression, he's like, do I have, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, he, I think he calls, I, I think, I think this is less, this might be, you know, if it, if, if we see a queen or a, a set, oh, he folded, oh, uh, I, wow. See, that, because he had the 10, uh -huh. he was blocking the straight. He was, he was blocking his bluffs. He was blocking Joey's bluffs. Is that? But, yes. But yeah, I mean, you're calling knowing you're behind, but uh, but thinking that hey, if I call, I win. Yep. I get it. Then the match is over. So so it's a gamble. So I I just thought that he might go for the gamble. Yeah, I think that might have been a spot you could do that. Oops, look. Match and I, again. I might have called there. Yeah. But I tend to embrace a lot of variants sometimes. <laughs> Don't know why. Yeah, yeah. I hey. shouldn't. <laughs> We're playing poker. <laughs> it's, it's all variants. Well, that's true. It's nothing. It's certain times when you don't have to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to allow it. All right, let's see what happens here. Is Joey going to... No, he's not three-betting with his suited connectors. Or suited gappers, I guess. Okay, John's slow playing it. Hoping to get Joey to uh, bite. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> Gonna go for something, and Joey's not, gonna, he's not even yet. Yep, he's playing the board. He's like, is he bluffing with a dirty diaper? No, so I can't call. <laughs> yeah, that's the only. Thing. That's if, the only thing he's he like, he's like, well, I've seen him bluff with a dirty diaper. I got a call here. <laughs> that would be a hell of a call. <laughs> And if if he did make a call like that, then we'd have to put him on an investigation yeah, exactly. as to like, how did he was... know that John had the dirty diaper? <laughs> kind of like the Jack Four hand, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it could be the big publicity for rec poker, right? I, I yeah. Mean, there was a yeah. big controversy yeah. in the heads yeah. up thing. Yeah. Joey Ingram himself. <laughs> Is accused of cheating <laughs> in the high stakes world of Marek Madness. Marek Madness, a lot of prestige in that event. <laughs> well, it looks like yeah. you got a chop. Definitely, yeah. Prestige isn't in the sixteen, the sixteen player brackets for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You don't see a lot of those sixteen player brackets. That's yeah. So Oh, now you want the dirty diaper. Yes. And John just went ahead on the turn. Might get a call. Wow. Yeah. I was like, he saw wow. my call. Wow. With a four <laughs> deuce. That's a, that's a big move. I don't know if I could make that bet. Can you? Uh, no. <laughs> or maybe the way Joey played it gave him an indication that he had absolutely nothing. Oh, Joey with his flush draw says, yeah, nice. And the ace, he can represent the ace as the yeah, same, and then yeah. he's got the back, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you, he's all the same thing. Uh-oh, uh -oh. they both have an ace. 
Unfortunately, yeah. Poker Geek has two of them. I mean, he just calls. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, you couldn't ask yeah, for much yeah, a better flop for Joey, yeah, could you? Going... I mean, you just put it in, right? You have a pot size to it. You have to. You have to put it in. Oh, he, oh, he leaves a little behind. Interesting. He leaves a little behind. He wants leaves to see a little sign. Oh, oh, call him. no. Oh. Poker says, no, you're not giving away with that. <laughs> <laughs> All we need is a heart for him to stay oh, alive. Oh, good game. This no, is entertaining. Good game. Oh, Look at that there, was, John. That was, yes. Took down nice. the man, Joey Ingram. Wow. Way to go, John. Wow. And pocket aces were the hand that won. Did anybody guess anybody that? Have, anybody guess pocket aces? And we never saw the nine of diamonds. Nope, so, no, 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 nobody guessed pocket aces. Okay, so. So the next time we're going to see Joe Cool. We're going to see Ben, we're going to see Kim, and we're going to see John. Yep. And I don't have the bracket in front of me, so I don't know exactly who's playing who, but they... Uh... Okay, Joe is going to be against Ben, and Taylor will be playing... Or Kim, Kim will be playing Kim. John. Kim and John, and then uh, Ben and Joe. Wow, we're getting, we're getting down to it. We started with... Uh... 16 players we're down to four and then soon we'll be able to declare a, a final winner hope everybody's bracket is doing good join us i believe next tuesday for the uh, at the same time next day and we'll be doing the final four and i think i'm not sure do we do the whole um do we finish think, it up next tuesday i, I, th I think we do Yes. Yep. So we're and then have the... and then the final match is actually a two out of three. So correct. Two correct. out of three match. So we're gonna see uh the semi final matches and then the final matches will be going on at two out of three. So it should be uh fun. Join us next week, definitely same time, yep. which TV dot rec poker. Is that right? Switch TV slash rec poker. All right. See you next week, guys. Thanks for joining us. A lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Rob.